Hey baby, I hear the blues are calling. Toss salads and scrambled eggs. Avez-vous goûté le strudel ici? Non. Il n'est pas si mauvais. Après vous. Verdict. Comme je disais, pas si mauvais. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we are recreating the strudel from Inglorious Bastards. Now, I've never made strudel, so this is going to be a learning experience for both of us. We're starting off with a cup and a half of bread flour. We need bread flour because we want a lot of gluten. We're going to make a little well in the center and then dump in four tablespoons of vegetable oil, two egg whites, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and a half tablespoon of lemon juice. Give this a little mix with your hands until it just barely comes together, and then we're going to add a quarter cup of warm water, about 110 degrees, which we're then going to mix until it forms a semi-cohesive dough. If it's a little too sticky, add some flour, but we want a really sticky, soft, pliable dough. Now we're going to flour our worktop and just knead the hell out of this. And when I say knead, I mean knead. We're gonna knead it and we're gonna pound it against the table. All of this is to build up a strong gluten network because we're gonna be stretching this out thinner than a sheet of paper. So smack it against the table, take out all your frustrations on it until you get a smooth, supple dough that we're going to place in an oiled bowl and let rest for about 30 minutes. In the meantime, we're gonna make our apple filling. Peel four good baking apples. When I say baking apples, usually green apples like Granny Smith. These are apples that retain their shape when cooking. And that's what we're after. We want to chop those very fine, nice and thin, because we want them to cook as quickly as possible. We're going to season these apples a solid 30 minutes before putting them in the strudel so they weep a lot of their moisture. So put them in a large bowl with half a cup of sugar, a tablespoon of cinnamon, half a cup of raisins, and the zest of one lemon. You also want to throw some lemon juice in there too if you want to prevent the apples from turning brown. And we're going to add some flour. This is going to help soak up some of the moisture. Taste for seasoning, and then it's time for the scariest part of the day, stretching out the dough. For this, we're going to need a large tablecloth that we are going to liberally dust with flour, especially towards the center, because that's going to be the stickiest part. Plop down our dough, dust our rolling pin, and start rolling it out until it's a large circle, maybe about 18 to 24 inches wide. And then we're going to pick it up and start stretching it like a pizza pie, but a much larger, more fragile pizza pie. Dust your knuckles with flour and very gently rotate the dough using your fists in a motion like this until you get it as large as you possibly can without tearing it. Then place it back down and slowly tug at the edges until it is thin enough that you can see the pattern of the tablecloth through the dough. And then we're going to slice off the rough edges and start drizzling the whole thing down with delicious melted butter. The dough is very fragile at this point, so start by drizzling and then very, very gently brush the entire thing down, making sure that every square inch is soaked in butter. This is essential for creating those flaky layers that we were after. Then we're going to sprinkle the entire surface with chopped walnuts and hazelnuts and place a row of our spiced apples at one end of the dough. Then using the tablecloth, we're going to roll the dough up on itself, tuck in the edges, brush the top down with butter, rinse and repeat. You know you're dealing with an old school recipe when one of the most important pieces of kitchen equipment you need is a tablecloth. I might not be German, but I think that I've earned the honorary title of Oma. So now that our roll is all rolled up, we're going to seal the edges in place on a parchment lined baking sheet, preheat our oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and get ready to brush this thing down with a beaten egg. Make sure it's really super well coated with the egg. We want a nice brown crust. It's gonna bake for about an hour, and every 10 or so minutes, we're gonna to wanna to take it out whenever it looks dry and give it a good basting with melted butter. Once the crust is brown to your satisfaction, we're going to turn it out onto a wire rack to cool for at least another hour before hacking ourselves off a tubular piece of pastry. This guy turned out a little bit too airy on the inside, so next time I would recommend rolling tighter and with more layers. Give it a good dusting of powdered sugar, and let's dig in. Oh, yeah, sorry, Hans. We're going to make some whipped cream, which is simple enough. We're going to start with a cup of heavy cream, add maybe a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of sugar, give it a good whip. I had a summer job in a chocolate cafe when I was 14, so don't be surprised if my whipped cream comes out perfect. And to make it all fancy like they do in the movie, we're going to pipe it 
using a pastry bag, making a nice little mountain of cream that we're then going to spoon on top of our beautiful pastry and finally take a big flaky bite. Now this turned out really, really, really good. I highly recommend it as a centerpiece for your next dinner party or terrifying Nazi brunch.